Did you know that artificial intelligence is going to create a 30 trillion dollar opportunity? 30 trillion dollars. But what is the cost of developing these technologies? Is it getting cheaper or is it getting more expensive? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Janaid, neurocritical care stroke and epilepsy specialist, and we're going to talk about how artificial intelligence development and deployment is getting cheaper and better. Let's look at this graph. This is from ARK Invest. It actually stipulates that artificial intelligence is going to bring more economic value than internet itself. By 2037, we're talking about $30 trillion of economic activity just because of artificial intelligence. This is a massive, massive, massive opportunity. And artificial intelligence in healthcare is not going to be left behind, but it's going to be part and parcel. As a matter of fact, one of the key most important factors in artificial intelligence as a whole. Always healthcare takes a backseat in terms of technological advancement and technological adoption. However, when it does, when regulatory environments are actually better, when the technology is mature enough, then AI in healthcare or any new technology in healthcare becomes more widespread. And we are at the cusp of seeing that in real time. Now let's talk about the cost itself. Look, cost is generally between the technical cost and the human resources. We're not gonna talk about human resources. We're gonna just talk about the technical cost. Within the technical cost bucket, there are two major costs. One is hardware and the other one is software. In the hardware category, we've got storage, compute and bandwidth. Within the software category, we have labeling, training and deployment. Let's talk about all six of them. In this previous video, I talked about how CPU in itself is evolving into a system on a chip design with artificial intelligence embedded within chip design itself. More importantly, the cost of compute is getting cheaper and cheaper. I'm not going to talk about 1947. Let's just talk about 1985s or something when Mac 2 was released. At that point in time, for the same compute power that we're using in iPad 2, not the latest one, you will have to pay a million dollars. A million dollars. Now it is less than $100. Clearly the computation is getting cheaper and cheaper and more easily available. That's the key thing. It is globally available at the moment at a very cheap rate. What about storage? I mean, you need massive amount of storage, right? You need data upon data upon data. We talked about it in a previous video, the five Vs of data. Over here, we're going to talk about that, how storage is getting cheaper. We have two major kinds of storage, HDD, which is basically hard disk drives and SSD, solid state drives. And both of them are have massively decreasing in cost. If you look at this chart, cost per megabyte is in a rapid decline and it is going to continue to do so and we're going to see even newer forms of nvme flash storage getting cheaper in prices again in one of those videos i talked about the connectivity 5g and 6e and those who have not watched it make sure we're going to link it down in the description it is so important that we have increased bandwidth because this amount of data needs to be uploaded at times, downloaded, sometimes locally trained, sometimes trained in the cloud. We need massive amounts of bandwidth. And as you can see by this graph, it is just ridiculous how the prices are falling for bandwidth. And this is again going to continue to happen as more and more fiber is laid down around the world. So we're seeing that from the hardware perspective, the key important ingredients, compute, storage, and bandwidth, all are significantly falling in prices. What about software? Whenever you're doing an AI project, one of the key things is that you need the data, of course. So we're gonna get the data, but then you have to create a ground truth. And that's where you actually go ahead and label through bound boxes, through classification models, that what exactly is the ground truth of that particular data. Once you have the ground truth, then you can proceed towards training and then finally deployment. So are there any open source labeling software available? You want one, two, there are actually at least 10 available. Nearly all major companies, Amazon, Azure, GCP, all of them have their own labeling software as well. One of them is basically Amazon SageMaker. However, my current favorite for general artificial intelligence is Label Studio. But if you want to do medical labeling, then you should use Mona AI or again, flywheel.io. There are other, again, tons and tons of available software that we can use in terms of creating ground truth for medical imaging and audio, video, etc. Labeling, you don't really have to buy a software. You don't have to pay licensing fees. Of course, if you do so, that is actually important. I'm using MD.ai for my personal project. By the way, that's gonna be great when it releases. So you're gonna see that more and more software are available 
at a fairly cheaper price that was literally available at some point in time to large mega million enterprise corporations. What about training? Oh my God. I mean, there was a time that we used to think that who's going to be able to create these frameworks for training. There's so many available open source areas where you can train your artificial intelligence. TensorFlow, OpenCV, iTor, so, so, so many. I mean, I would recommend if you're using cloud infrastructure, you should use PyTorch because that could be increased accuracy. But if you're doing edge devices, I would recommend TensorFlow Lite. Just my recommendations, but of course, AI engineers know much better in terms of how to train these data sets. Training, of course, requires more CPU and GPU power. And therefore, you should be mindful of using those resources. But again, when the compute is cheaper, storage is cheaper, bandwidth is cheaper, when you actually have the software that is open source, the development and deployment of AI becomes faster and better. And lastly, of course, the deployment itself. I mean, these models that are off training can also have built-in deployment capabilities as well. But there are other open source softwares that are available that makes deployment even faster, easier, and cheaper. As I said, one of them is basically TensorFlow Serving, and you can use that. Or, if you feel like it, MLflow. Or, if you feel like it, Kubeflow. There are so many deployment options available. Again, all of them open source available. Artificial intelligence is getting easier and easier to develop and deploy. And what about if you want to de not develop your own model? Can you find open source models? Yeah. If you go to website papers with code, you can actually find pre-built models that you can take a small selection of data set, run it in a pre-built model, see what's going on, and then decide if you really want to get into this project or not. It is a massive, massive opportunity. And this is going to change the way we live already. And it is going to change the way we live and deliver healthcare. Thank you.